Hi, it's Steve from Brownells, and today we have a special guest in the studio with us. It's Troy from Midwest Industry. Troy, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming by. You're one of our favorites. Uh, I think we all have ARs with your pieces on them. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So uh, I guess a lot of people are wondering, I am particularly, um, a little bit about Midwest Industries, the history and everything. Okay. You've been around a long time for the AR market. Yeah, next year will be 20 years for us. Yeah, which is forever in it's AR. It's a pretty long time. Um, when we started the company um, back in 2002, I developed the first part um, for an AR-15. It's basically a real easy light mount to put a light on an AR-15. The old A2 type rifles with the fixed front sight. Um, wasn't a lot of solutions out there that were real uh, affordable for right. the average guy. And you can't always find electrical tape when you need it. Exactly. So <clears throat> I'm a tool and die maker by trade. So I thought, well, there's really nothing out here. I'm going to design something and go on the machine and make something. So I made something and uh, actually made like two dozen of them. Wow. After I figured out how I thought it would work and it would work well. And actually a neighbor of mine and myself, we put them on eBay and they started popping off and selling real quick, you know? Oh man. It's like, man, I might be onto something here. So um, sent some out for testing and development and stuff like that. I actually sent one to Brownells back in 2002 and uh, they started selling and getting popular. And that's basically what started the whole company off in 2003. So. Those were the days when we were just starting to roll on the AR train. Yep. And accessories were starting to come in slowly. There was a trickle at first. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of manufacturers of tactical accessories back then. You had the big boys like Arms and Knights and... True. Um, but that was really about it back then, you know. There wasn't a lot of like, accessory manufacturers back then. Nope. And then we got into the cheese grater quad rail yep. era. And that lasted for a while. Yep, we made those. Um, so basically what we did after the one, it was called the 01, is basically how our, our uh, part numbers started. It wasn't anything real sophisticated. Our early years of part numbers, but they just started at one and went up from there. Nice and easy. Um, we made the light mount and then we made some little accessory rails to attach the plastic handguards to mount lights too. And uh, it just kind of progressed. Well, it seems like you guys come out with a really well-tested product, but it's always within a price range where it doesn't scare any, anybody off. Yeah, we try to make everything affordable for the average guy with the same quality people get with the real high-end yeah. um, government OEM type, you know, manufacturers. Because, you know, not everybody can make, you know, right. the, the really, not everybody makes a ton of money for parts, but we always make everything we can with the best quality and American made, so. And with the equipment you've got now, I mean, it's easier than ever, I would think. Yeah, things have come a long way, that's yeah. for sure. I mean, were you actually turning handles back in the day when you started out? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I made those first parts. I made every one of them myself. Yeah, which is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, it was, so. <laughs> so what's what's the basic philosophy behind Midwest Industries? Um, I guess I, our basic philosophy would be to give the end user the best quality, um, most affordable, most, you know, have the most features and the most important thing, be American made everywhere we right. can. But you, you never seem to sit still. It's always no. an evolution where you're coming out with something new all the time. Yeah, you have to. The market trends change, um, the platforms change, the trends in the platforms change. Um, there's platforms that uh, you never thought people would want stuff for that obviously Stuff, they do want stuff for. Stuff sells that you were yep. pleasantly surprised by? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you sit still, you're gonna wither on the vine and die. You just gotta keep going forward and keep looking for that next greatest thing. Yeah, where do, where do these ideas come from? Are they? I've been a shooting guy my whole life. Um, I'm pretty good at designing parts after all these years and we're all, my whole shop is, uh, we're all shooters. All the parts that we come out with, we all test them. Right. Um, Bad we're job. Just Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, we're just all enthusiasts, you know, and we're all looking for solutions for make things easier or better. Yeah. And uh, I think your products work really well. I use them a lot myself. Thank you. So, Troy, the AR-15 has been the mainstay all this time, but 
What's the trend you see coming up here? Well, over the last few years now, we obviously are into a lot of new platforms like MCX, MPX, um, Scorpions, SCARs, even lever guns now that people want solutions for those. Yeah. Um, back in the day when we did the ARs, then we got into some stuff with AKs because when we did our first AK handguard, there was no solutions, even back in the quad rail days, for a handguard that would fit a wide variety of AKs. That would Because there's me so the many game. makers and quality control issues and stuff like that. So Yeah, how do you deal with something like that? You just need a lot of guns to measure and check. and. So you've got a sure. firearms library you can go to? Yes, and... sir try yep. all your parts on. Which is a good thing for me because being an 80s kid we liked all the <laughs> pre-band type guns and the stuff I couldn't get then I've been trying to get a nice library built up of stuff now so I got a lot of examples of stuff. So wow. So you just run into the vault and you try your handguard on something or your, your yep. block, your magazine well block, whatever. Yep, that's what we try to do. Nice. But it definitely helps having examples of everything and not just one or two, you need a wide variety of them because of manufacturing tolerances and stuff like that. So, but as far as uh, where things are trending now, um, things kind of go with way, not only what guns sell, but the way, say like the uh, politics are in the nation too, sure. you know, um, ban states, stuff like that. It kind of forces needs that weren't there before they come up front and then you try to make stuff to solve those problems well i i noticed that the ak market is getting more and more high end uh, mm -hmm. a lot more accessories available a lot of boutique guns out there um, yep it's a really strong following yeah well with the uh with the bands they had on all the ak's the manufacturing of guns kind of you know we had parts kits come in and guys were building parts kits well now that those parts kits are getting a little harder to find and they're getting more pricey yeah the prices of the guns are creeping up um there's u.s manufacturers now for ak's so you know as those things kind of change i think the guns are demanding higher quality products. Oh, well, sure. And, and and the prices of them are as much, they're, they're more now than ARs. Right. At one time, when you went to the range and saw somebody with an AR, it was like a Colt SP-1, and that was it, just stock yep. out of the box. And for a while, it was AKs with the wooden stocks just as they came. And now you rarely see one that hasn't been modified somehow or had something tacked onto it. Yep, absolutely. Um, Versatility with platforms is what drives sales too. True. People love to customize whatever platform they get and kind of make it their own. Right. And so the best thing you can do with an AK is mount an optic on it somehow with it's stable. Absolutely. I yep. I think. And you guys do a good job with that. Thank you. But the lever guns, that's kind of a surprise to me. That came out of left field. Yeah, that was kind of came out of left field for the people at my shop too. Oh. Um, so we did a lot of pig hunting make probably about, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. And the places we went were in the UP of Michigan. They're very thick cedar swamps. Yeah. And we'd be running around in these swamps and they're dark and they're wet and pigs, if you've ever hunted them, you know, they can get a little feisty. <laughs> yeah. So when you're down in these places, it's like, wow, you know, and we were hunting with lever guns because we thought it would be fun. Something a little bit different than the ARs we handle all the time at sure. work, you know? Sure. So we are like, wow, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have a light on this rifle when you're in these dark places? So I came back and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna draw something up here. And that's kind of how we came out with the first M-Lock handguard. And the guys in the shop weren't too thrilled about me making it, but. Really? Yeah, they thought we'd catch a lot of flack over it, which we did, because it, you know, right away, you know, it's the big, it's, you know, you're trying to make it a tactical rifle. It's not really a tactical rifle. It's a yeah. modernized sporting rifle and make it a more useful tool as a hunting tool. I could see how there'd be some pushback, you know, doing away with the wood and mm -hmm. mounting optics, uh, you know, up on your forend or whatever. Yep, a lot of guys are real traditional. But if you look at like the guide guns and stuff like that, the Alaskan Outfitters yeah. use, they really, like it quite a bit especially for you know they're doing stuff that was a lot more dangerous than what we do or their bush planes are putting these things in and stuff like that so yeah um it's definitely got a following that's for sure yeah, when the gun's used on a daily basis as a tool yep. suddenly your priorities change absolutely 
Well, Troy, I'm sure this isn't the end of the road. I mean, you guys have got a lot of stuff in process right now. We're kind yeah. of looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff in the works and as long as I'm breathing, I don't think we're gonna stop. So whatever, whatever area the market takes us is where we're gonna go. Well, feel free to stop by here anytime. We'd be glad to see you and uh, we'll do this again sometime. Excellent, thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely, thanks for having us. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any comments on Midwest Industries parts, accessories, whatever, if you think lever guns should be left alone or modified, let us know in the comments section. We'd like to hear from you. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.